Hello guys, welcome back. After a long wait, F1 was back and now we are towards the end of the 2020 season. Though the season took off late, it didn't miss out on entertaining us and we witnessed history being rewritten. So we thought why not make a video on F1. For this, let's roll back into our memory lane. The year is 2013. Red Bull in their RB9 is just unstoppable. In order to compete with them, Mercedes and Lotus needed something innovative and new. That's when they came up with a new type of suspension system called the Front and Rear Interconnected Suspension System, which is famously known as the FRIC suspension. Mercedes first introduced this system in 2011 and it took them two years to perfect it. So how does it work? The FRIC suspension links the front and the rear suspension of the car using a hydraulic system. It also connects the left and the right suspension members to act like anti-roll bars. The main aim was to provide better stability to the car and also improve the aerodynamic performance. The rake in an F1 car plays a major role in its stability and aerodynamic performance. The rake is nothing but the race given to the rear end with respect to the front end of the car. If the angle is too shallow, the car becomes less stable and if the angle is too steep, it affects the aerodynamics and wears out the front nose cone. When the car is on the track, it goes through a number of movements. It pitches under braking and rolls while cornering. Due to this, the rake angle may vary and the car might lose stability and performance. So how does the FRIC work? The FRIC works by shifting the hydraulic fluid from one chamber to another. Here, the suspension system for all the wheels are connected together by means of hydraulic pipes. So when there is displacement in one of the wheels, hydraulic pressure is created due to its displacement. This moves the remaining wheels accordingly. There are two types of FRIC, cross-linked interconnected suspension system and the parallel-linked interconnected suspension system. First, let's talk about the cross-linked suspension system. The lower reservoir of one damper is connected to the upper reservoir of another one and vice versa. Let's say a car is cornering onto the left hand side. In that case, the entire weight of the car will act on the right hand side. But because of this, the outer hydraulic elements will be compressed and since the reservoirs are cross connected, the liquid will flow from the upper reservoir to the lower reservoir of the other damper. Here a high pressure is created on the upper reservoir of one damper and the lower reservoir of another one. This creates resistance between the two systems and increases the roll stiffness. Due to this, the body roll is prevented and the car is much more stable around corners. The same occurs when a car experiences a pitch. A resistance is created between the two systems and the car is stable. Next, we'll talk about the parallel linked interconnected suspension system. Here, the upper reservoir of one damper and the upper reservoir of another damper are connected together. It's the same for the lower reservoir as well. Let's take a scenario of a car braking. When the car brakes, the weight will shift forward and the front suspension will compress and the nose will tip down. Due to this, the rear will rise and this causes the car to lose stability. But in this type of suspension, a high pressure is created on the upper chamber. This creates resistance between the two systems and transfers the fluid to the rear system where the pressure is low. Hence the car stiffness increases and the nose will not dive down under braking. The opposite will happen when the car accelerates. Due to this type of suspension, the car's height will remain more consistent, thereby maintaining the rake angle. This provides better control and aerodynamic performance. So that's it for this video guys. Hope this was interesting. If you want us to make more videos regarding Formula 1, do let us know in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestion for topics, also drop them down in the comments box. We'll take a look into them. See you in the next one. Until then, bye.